Hi, this is the Bet Central podcast. Let's make some profit. Hello and welcome to another Masters Masterclass powered by Betcoza. With me, your host, um, David Kappel at Linio on Twitter and our favorite punter, Masters. Masters, how are you? Ash, we came close again last week. Very close. Yes, uh, we we did. Um, you know, um, these days we we're really coming close. Um, if we're not coming close, we we winning either day, either the Saturday or the Sunday. So I'm I'm quite quite happy with that, and I guess it's just a reminder as well for people to say um, sometimes you need to split the slips, play Saturday, play Sunday, and then. Um, it makes your your chances of winning obviously much much higher yeah 100% um but yeah let's hope we can maybe bring a full one home um uh, that would be lovely <laughs> also for my bank balance um i hear you having a a soccer game later yourself putting on the boots so let's uh, let's jump straight into this week's selection starting off in serie a with napoli Yes, let's start it off. Um, in Serie A, we have um Salernitana versus um Napoli. Yes, Salernitana playing at home, Napoli playing away, and um here it's just gonna be a simple Napoli straight win, and um we are getting so much so much value from from Petkoza in 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 this particular one. And uh, it's quite quite surpri- surprising actually because Salernitana they are sitting twentieth, and they haven't won a game uh, this season so far, and they've played ten. And uh, you know Napoli, they are the the champions even though they're not doing like hundred uh, percent, but they're still they're still out there, right? Just hold on. Okay, Masters is getting a call. Um... Let me give you some other stats so long. Head to head. Napoli have won five out of the last six games against Salernitana, including the last two at Salernitana. Um, it's actually both teams have had goals this season. Salernitana over 2.5 in four of the last five games. Napoli over 2.5 in... Six out of the last seven games, but Masters selected a win. Masters, sounds like you're back. Yes, yes, uh, I'm back. Um, sorry about that, and thanks, thanks for pushing. I think you've pretty much um, sum- summarized it. Um, this is a simple one. Um, like I said, Napoli, the champions, they are sitting fifth, um, even though they, they're pretty... Um, so average this season, but I still think they have um, the quality to win against a team like um, Salernitana, even though they're playing away. Salernitana, they're chasing their first um, win of the season, and I don't think they'll be able to do it um, against Napoli. So seems like uh, a good a good value here. Yeah, and um, I mean, we've, had, we've spoken about Napoli before. Uh, they haven't started all that well, but um, away from home, they have won three out of their five games, uh, including the last two. Uh, uh, quite convincing 4 0 at Lecce, 3 1 against Verona. So maybe they're finding their feet a bit under the new coach. Obviously, um, Farazzelia was a bit better in the recent games. Ozyman is out injured. He's obviously a big miss. But yeah, we hope um, it will come through. And now we're moving over to our favorite leagues for goals, the Bundesliga. People must just be aware that. There was the time switch actually in um, in Europe, so the games this weekend or from now on started an hour later. So last week's three thirty kickoff in Bundesliga is now four thirty, which maybe gives Panthers a bit more time to prepare. Uh, but yeah, we are starting actually with my favorite team. Yeah, that's actually some good insights, man. I did not know that. Um, perfect. Yeah, we're starting with your favorite um, team, and I think um, uh, maybe let me just say officially. So yes, we have um, Hoffenheim versus uh, Bayer Leverkusen, and the official page here is over two point five goals, 
Um, your team has ruined the, the market, to be honest. You know, um, when you have over 2.5 goals, we usually used to get about 1.54, 1.55 right now. The, it's, it's, it's quite low. And that's only because um, they have been consistent in terms of goals and in terms of winning. So at the same time, you can't really blame them because we've had them um, since we started the, the season uh, with the podcast and we haven't lost um, yet. And we're just going to keep selecting them, even though uh, the value might be a bit questionable there from our friends, Pet Koza. But um, I'm still quite, quite happy um, with with them because it's consistent. So I do, I do understand. Um, just to put things into perspective, um, <clears throat> Leverkusen, they've won nine, nine, nine straight games. And um, the one they've drawn um, was against uh, Bayern Munich. And I think overall, it, it's been like 15 or so games competitive in both the league and both cup. Hmm? 17 games unbeaten. Yeah, 17 games unbeaten and only one draw. The rest have been wins, which is actually a bit a bit crazy. <laughs> you know, um, this thing used to be pulled by Bayern like three, four years ago, not not the recent Bayern. But um, I'm, I'm, there's not much to, to talk there. Maybe it's better to talk about Hoffenheim because I love a question it's pretty clear. Um, Hoffenheim as well, in terms of goals, they're doing quite well. They're averaging four goals in, in, in nine games. And then out of the, the nine that have played, eight have, have given them um, over 2.5 goals. And they like to score and concede as well. So I'm quite I'm quite happy with them. And um, yeah, I think it's it's pretty pretty straightforward. Yeah, I mean, I think you summed it up, especially for this market. Hoffenheim, 8 out of 10. Uh, games over 2.5. Leverkusen, 10 out of 10. All of their last 10 games had over 2.5 goals. Uh, Hoffenheim, also 8 out of 10. Both teams to score. Leverkusen, 5 out of 6. Both teams to score. So, head-to-head uh, -head looks equally strong. 6 out of 7 between those two over 2.5 and 5 out of 7. Both teams to score. So, one could look again at um, you know our favorite single market for over 2.5 and both teams to score. Uh, it's written in the stars. Uh, I think there's not much debate about this one. Let's move on to the next game. We're staying in Bundesliga. Yes, next game we are staying in Bundesliga. And uh, we have Mainz versus RB um, Leipzig here. And um, the official bet is um, RB Leipzig to win. They are playing away. I know um, a lot of Panthers are still angry with um, RB Leipzig because of the cup game where they lost 1-0 to uh, Wolfsburg. However, even Mainz themselves, they did um, lose 3-0 to Heather to, 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 to Heather Berlin. So I think it's um, quite, quite balanced. And then looking at um, um, uh, the home team here, Mainz, uh, they are sitting... 18th, which is the, the the last on the lock while playing. Actually, this is almost similar to the, the Napoli one that we've selected where you have a team that's sitting fifth, um, is playing a team that's last on the lock. And Mainz are looking for their first win and I don't think it's going to come against um, RP Leipzig. And I'm looking at RP Leipzig's record away as well. I think it gives me a bit of confidence. Out of the four games they've played, they won three and then they've lost um, the one against, obviously, um, Leverkusen. But um, I'm quite quite confident that they should be able to, to win this. So, yeah, it's a straight win. Yeah, um, Leipzig have been good. Um, I think their, that cup game was a bit of an outlier. Um, in the league, it looked like they had found their form, you know, because they had won six out of their last eight, last eight games. Uh, last week was a 6-0, pretty convincing. Before that was a 3-1. Um, I have to say, Mainz have actually changed coaches. Uh, you know, there's always that talk of the new coach um, uh, yeah. uh, effect. Um, so that you know, people need to be wary of, but they have looked quite poor. I mean, Hertha they played in the Bundesliga last season, but they got relegated, so they actually Mainz actually lost against the second division team 3 0, you know, <laughs> so which was the last draw in, in the coach decision. 
Uh, so Leipzig are definitely the favorites here. And um, uh, if they want to stay, you know, up, 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 up pace with um, the, the likes of Bayern and Leverkusen on the lock, they have to win games like this. So let's move on to the next one. Uh, uh, Union Berlin against Frankfurt. Two regular teams in our selections. Yes, yes. Um, we have um, <clears throat> uh, Union Berlin playing at home and then Frankfurt playing away. And the official badge here is over 1.5 goals. And I think, um, like I always say, um, if the value is good in the Bundesliga, we'll take it. And um, this is one of the highest values. I think we're getting about 1.3 or so in, in, in here. So um, shout, out, shout out to Petkoza on that one. Um, Union Berlin, so far this season, we've discussed them before. They're not um, doing um, quite well. They've played nine games, then they've lost seven, and seven is actually the highest in the league. They've on, they're on, they're joined by um, FC. Uh, they are joined uh, by uh, FC Colon, who have lost um, seven games as well. So I'm hopeful that Frankfurt will be able to to win this game. But just to be on the safe side, we're just going for, for goals. And then in terms of goals, um, Union Berlin, eight out of the nine games they've played so far have given us over 1.5 goals. And that equaling an average of 3.3 goals. And that's why um, the value for me is it, it's quite good. Frankfurt, they're not really um, uh, high scorers. And... Uh, that's because you can see that they're averaging only 2.3 goals uh, per game out of the nine that we've played. But it's still quite decent when you're looking at it of on, on two or more goals per game. So they've played seven um, out of the nine games of over 1.5 goals. So I think I'm quite confident uh, with that. And um, them playing away uh, might, might force our Union Berlin to get one in. And obviously they have to come back as well. So yeah. Of 1.5 goals. Yeah, I mean, um, if you look at head to head, um, it also looks very promising because all of their last, um, how many games is it? Two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. All of them had over 1.5 goals. Uh, none was under. And I mean, this is just a crazy run that Union Berlin are on. I, I think we talk about them every week now, but. Um, 11 losses in a row. They lost again uh, last weekend. They lost in the Cup. Uh, they still haven't changed coaches. But, um, you know, even the most faithful management, uh, you know, they if, if they lose another one here at home, um, they might they might do something with, to the coach. So the players need to come out, uh, which usually gives us a more open game like, like many of the Bundesliga games are. Uh, Remember yeah. to look at um, goals scored in the first half over 0.5. Um, there's usually some good value in there, and and most Saturdays it happens, especially for the for the early kickoffs. But um, we're moving over to the Premier League for our next uh, game. Yes, uh, the Premier League. We have uh, Brentford versus West Ham. Pretty average teams um, here we have. Uh, you can see the West Ham is sitting ninth and um, Bradford is sitting 10th. So, yeah, that's 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 why. And funny enough, United are sitting 8th. We are pretty average as well this season. So, <laughs> just to add a bit of something there. But um, anyways, we are going for an over 1.5 goals as the official bet um, on this game. And um, that's that's simply because looking at uh, even though these teams are pretty average, but uh, they they do manage to go, to score goals and concede as well. Um, starting off the, with the home team Brentford, they've played ten games um, so far, averaging two point eight, and nine out of those ten um, have been over one point five goals. And then West Ham as well, uh, nine out of the ten games they've played so far have been over one point. 1.5 goals and they're averaging 3.3, which is um quite good. And look at looking at uh, West Ham when they're playing away, their average is higher. It's 3.6, and five out of the five have been um over 1.5 goals. So they haven't played any under when they're playing um away. And uh, same as Brentford as well. Um, at home they've played five games and five 
of those have been over 1.5 calls. Um, they haven't played any under. So these two stats, uh, they complement each other, and I'm hoping then it could be a simple one for, for us. So, yeah, over 1.5 goals. I'm glad you um, didn't bet against uh, Brentford in this one because you have a tendency to bet against them and then they they come up and win. they've done I think earlier in the season it was against Fulham and last week it was against Chelsea the game I told you I have stomach pains about and yeah it turned out it turned out that way so I need to repeat it but um, goals should be flying in this game I think um, four out of the last five head to head head over 1.5 and I think especially um, also, the the West Ham record uh, is quite uh, you know mouth watering here for for this fixture. Brentford look a bit on the up. Um, I think it could even be a game where it's both teams to score and over two point five. Um, that's what happened in West Ham in five out of West Ham's last six uh, games, over two point five goals and um, both teams to score. Uh, you only need over one point five. It should come fairly easily. Let's hope. Um, we're staying in England for the next game. Yes, we're staying in England uh, where we have Sheffield United versus Wolves. And the official bet on this game is Wolves or draw. Um, I think I haven't seen um, uh, any team so bad like um, like Sheffield um, so far this season. It's quite bad across all the, the top Euro European league. I mean, they've uh, played 10 games and they have lost nine of them and they've only drawn once. This is actually quite, quite bad. And they've considered like 29, 29 goals. Um, so I'm going to pick, pick Wolves here with the Wolves or draw as the official bet. And um, simply because I don't see a Brentford um, situation turning up anytime soon. And um, what I like about Wolves, it's the, the type of team that will um, always try to get um, points from the, from the smaller teams. That's, that's how they always manage to, to, to stay up in the league. And um, it's one of those teams where they, they frustrate you and they try to get a draw out of you. Um, you can see they've played um, 10 games. They've won three, they've drawn three, um, and then they've lost um, uh, four. But um, the four that they've lost, uh, it, ha it hasn't been in the last five games. So in the last five games, it's been three draws and two wins. So they played 2-2 two -two against uh, Newcastle. They won 2-1 uh, against Bournemouth. They drew 1-1 one -one against Villa. They won 2-1 um, against uh, the almighty Manchester City. And then they drew 1-1 one -one against uh, Luton. So you can see that this is a team that likes to uh, frustrate these other teams. So Sheffield, I don't think they stand a chance. So Wolves or draw official bet? Yeah, head-to-head -head also looks good. Um, last three games, Wolves won all of them against Sheffield and uh, didn't even concede. Um, I think... Stats wise, this game is so um, you know clear that I we I I don't feel I need to say much more. I mean Sheffield United one draw and nine defeats in the Premier League. Uh, Wolves are on the up. Uh, they beat in Manchester City recently. Didn't lose to Newcastle. Didn't lose to Aston Villa. You know it would be a case of calling our ancestors if they now lose to Sheffield all of a sudden. You know. <laughs> so let's move on to the next one it's quite an in exciting one uh, Newcastle United against Arsenal yes um, I think it's one of those uh, interesting games for, for this weekend uh, Newcastle are playing at home Arsenal away and um, I see over 2.5 goals here just simply because these two teams have a tendency of having those um, exciting games but we're just going to take it nice and easy with an over 1.5 goals. Uh, the Both teams did play some midweek fixtures where um, United obviously lost to, to Newcastle 3-0 at home. And um, also on the other side, uh, West Ham managed to knock out um, Arsenal with a 3-1. So you can see that this this, this scorelines um, are, are good um, scorelines for, 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 for such teams. Anyways, looking at the lock as well, um, 
Arsenal was sitting, are sitting second, obviously chasing Spurs for the top spot. And then Newcastle are sitting sixth, sixth just uh, below Aston Villa. And they are also hunting for a European spot. So both teams, I think they, they're quite motivated coming into this game. But uh, looking at the goals um, statistics and then studying it off with Newcastle, eight out of the 10 games that they've played have given them um, over 1.5 goals, averaging 3.7. And then Arsenal on the other side, it's seven out of the, the 10 that they've played, averaging 3.3, which is not really so bad, but it's quite a good number of average goals. And, and I'm quite confident that um, over 1.5 goals, we're really not asking for much. So it should um, it should come through. So, yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. We are not asking for much. Yeah. And um, I am... Quite pleased that you actually put Newcastle in after what they did to your team at Old Trafford. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think um, both teams have had goals. Um, Arsenal have some making up to do after they were knocked out of the cup. Um, head to head also looks good. Um, seven out of the last eight games had over 1.5, so I don't think uh, it's too much to ask. And um, we're finishing off the Saturday selections with um, their Klassiker in the Bundesliga. Yes, um, I think it's only fair we finish it uh, with one of the biggest games uh, this weekend. So Dortmund versus Bayern Munich. Dortmund is playing at home, uh, Bayern are playing um, away. Uh, Bayern, they are sitting second, obviously, for them. They always try to, to win the league, so no point in saying. And then you have Dortmund on the other side. They have it lost as well this season. They are sitting fourth, um, obviously, uh, trying to cement that, um, that top spot as well. But um, looking at the goals... I think there's not much really to say about Bayern in terms of over 2.5. Nine out of the nine games they've played so far this season have all been over 2.5 goals. However, Dortmund, uh, in terms of goals this season, they haven't really come through uh, for me. And that's why I haven't been um, selecting them. You can see that five out of the nine games they've played uh, have given over uh, 2.5 goals. I would have expected it to be higher. But yeah, and they're averaging 3.4, which is still um, not bad. So so that's good. However, this is mostly based on um, two things, which is Bayern's uh, recent form and the league form. And then obviously the history between these two teams, it's always a good game when they play. So I think then over 2.5 goals, um, it should come here. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the history between the two teams is very, very promising here. Because uh, eight out of eight had over two point five in the head to head, and eight out of eight had both teams to score. And uh, if you don't have anything better to do on on tomorrow at at seven thirty, I urge you to watch these games because they always live up to expectations. I hope now you know uh, it will not turn out the opposite. But let me just read the score lines: four to Bayern, two all, three one Bayern, three two Bayern, three two three one Bayern. 4 to Bayern, 3 to Bayern, 3 to Bayern. So Bayern obviously have been very dominant in this tie, but there have been goals mm. fought by both sides. And maybe this Dortmund side has learned a thing of two uh, out of those contests. Bayern also got a, a serious knock in the German Cup this uh, this midweek, losing to um, quite a shock mm. third division side uh, Saarbrücken. Uh, in the 95th minute. Uh, so that's one trophy gone. Uh, so obviously the bosses, they are not happy. And usually when Bayern experiences something like that, they come, come back really strong in the next game. So it should really be a cracking game and um, over 2.5 goals should be possible. Uh, which brings us to the end of the, the Saturday selection. Um, eight games, 10.57 odds. The code for Betcoza is 7Q7KW. 7Q7KW. Um, slice and dice, like we always say. But, Masters, let's move on to uh, Sunday. I see our first game from uh, La Liga is coming up. Yes, um, that's our first game at 3 o'clock. So, Alves 
Alvis, Alvis, whatever it is, versus um, Almeria. Alvis, I playing uh, at home, Almeria playing away. To be honest, uh, both of these teams are bad. I think it's one of those, if they're both bad, if I were to choose, I'll choose Alvis. So I think um, that's why I'm going with this bet here. So we have, um, as, uh, sorry, as our official bet as um, Alvis or draw. And um, Alvis are sitting 17th. And uh, Almeria are sitting um, 20th. So uh, the 17th spot is just um, just above the, the relegation zone. And um, Almeria, they are sitting uh, last. They still uh, want their first win of the of the season. So they've played 11, they've drawn three, and then they've lost um, they lo they've lost eight. At least um, Alaves have two wins um, under their belt, and they've also had uh, three draws. So it's quite good. But looking at the league in terms of form, uh, so, sorry, rather um, the, the the home form. Um, Alves are sitting about 18th with um, two wins and one draw. So I think uh, they, they're pretty average, but um, they're decent side if you compare them to Almeria. Because Almeria, when they're playing away um, on the other side, they're still sitting 20th um, with 16th considered out of the five games that they've played. Um, they have a bad um, <clears throat> goal difference, negative 11, because they've only scored five so far. So I think, uh, you know, I think sometimes I do say that um, La Liga teams, they love playing at home. So I think this is one one of those as well. So yeah, that's the official bet here. I love it or draw. Mm, yeah, it is one of those games that uh, where I understand where you're coming from, uh, but that do do give me a little bit of a, a tummy rumble, uh, because <laughs> I don't like to bet on on two on teams that are both sitting at the bottom of the table. Um, head to head is also a bit um wishy washy. Uh, the one one win for each of them and one draw. Um, but games are quite far back, uh, even in, in La Liga 2. Um, I recall last weekend, I think we had Almeria to lose also against Girona. Uh, and they actually started the game uh, like like a house on fire, leading 2-0 after 24 minutes. But then by the 43rd minute, they were 3-2 down and eventually lost 5-2. So let's hope something similar can happen. Uh, maybe not that they start as well. Uh, but that Alaves at least doesn't lose at home to keep the train going. Um, let's move on to the next one. Uh, back to the Premier League. Yes, we are back to the Premier League with uh, Nottingham versus Aston Villa. And uh, the official bet here is over 1.5 goals. Um, Nottingham are playing at home. While Aston Villa playing away, Nottingham in the last uh, six games, they haven't um, they haven't won um, anything. I think it's four draws and um, three um, what you call three three losses, which is actually quite bad. Um, Aston Villa on the other side, you know what? Um, we we know that they they are on fire um, uh, this season, and they're playing some some of the interesting um, games. Whether they are playing in the league or they are playing in 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 um, U Europe. However, in terms of um, the goals, one thing that mo did motivate me here is uh, Nottingham when they are playing away this season. They haven't lost so far. It's three draws and one losses. However, they've been able to score in all those four games. So meaning that they might still be able to get a one against um, Aston Villa. And reason being, when Aston Villa is playing away, they do concede quite um, quite a lot. In the five games they've played away, they've conceded 10. That's an average of two per game. Even though they have a good form overall, but they have a questionable form when they're playing um, away. So, which suggests that this um, it's something that uh, that should that should come. And in Aston Villa, overall, out of the ten games they've played, nine of them have been over one point five goals, and they are averaging four goals uh, per game, which that makes them second to Brighton, who are averaging four point two. So, yeah. Over 1.5 goals official. I think it should come easily, to be quite honest with you. 
Um, if I look at the head-to-head -head record, um, nine, ten out of the last eleven games between those two had over one point five, and um, Aston Villa are looking quite strong. Uh, I know you mentioned um, their losses away, but that was against Liverpool and Newcastle. You know, are two teams that uh, play for for Champions League and and maybe even the title. But um, many of the other teams, um, Villa really dispatched, as, especially recently. Um, five, yes, five wins in the last six. So they strong favorites for me in this one. Um, Goals should also come. Mm, not much more needs to be said. Let's move um, for the first time this weekend to the Uber Eat League oh, in France. Yes, uh, Uber Eats. So we have um, Nens versus Rams here. A four o'clock kickoff. Nens are playing at home. Rams playing away, obviously. And um, yeah, it's an of official bet of over 1.5 goals. And um, I think it's one of the, the highest values in terms of over 1.5 goals that Koza is giving us uh, in terms of our sleep. So I'm quite, quite happy with that. And I think um, these teams, they are obviously average teams, but in the league so far, uh, they're not so average because um, Rams, they're sitting... Uh, fifth in a, in a European spot, uh, while Nens are sitting seventh, just um, a one point behind the European spot. So you can see you see these two teams are fighting hard uh, this season, and that shows in their goal scoring ab abilities as well. So you have Nens on the other side. Uh, out of the ten games they've played so far, nine of those have given us over one point five goals while averaging 3.5. And then Rams on the other side, similar, 9 out of the 10 games they've played have given us uh, over 1.5 over goals, while averaging um, a simple 2.8 goals, of which for me it's still, it's still good enough. Actually, um, just before last weekend, all their games have had been um, over 1.5 goals. It's just that game against Lorient that was um, a 1 0 win to, to Rams. But I think overall, um, this is another one that should come. So, yeah, that's the official bet on this game. Yeah, I think you have summed it up quite nicely. Um, there isn't much more to be added uh, besides head to head. Um, four out of the last six games had over 1.5. Those four actually also had over 2.5 even. Uh, so it is a, quick, a fixture that actually has goals. The recent form says goals. It's quite interesting that you get a value of 1.36 on Betcosa for this one, but obviously we'll take it. Um, and we're moving back to La Liga for the next one. Yes, Yes, we're moving back to La Liga, where we have Valencia versus Granada. And um, here, the official bet is um, Valencia to, to win. And I think uh, this is one of those where you just, I feel I just have to commit. Obviously, you can go for Valencia draw no bet. Um, maybe you might get about 1.22, but I just think for me, uh, it's one of those where I, I feel Valencia have, have a chance. They are uh, playing at home, even though they are ninth, but uh, they are play playing against Granada, who out of the 11 games they've played, they've uh, only lost, uh, sorry, they've only won one game. So I think Valencia, them playing at home gives them that edge. However, they do have a funny, funny form when they are playing at home, Valencia. So they started with a win, and then it was a, a loss, then a win, then a loss, then a win. <laughs> so based on a trend, it suggests that this will be a loss, but <laughs> um, I don't think that's going to happen. And just simply because um, Granada's record um, away as well is quite, quite bad. Five games have played, they've considered 14, um, they've lost four, they've only drawn one. And um, they've also lost with some of the weak teams like your Osasuna, <clears throat> your Las Palmas. Um, okay, Real Sociedad is tough. 
and then Atletico Madrid is tough, of course, but um, I'm not convinced that they'll be able to win against Valencia. So, yeah, that's why that's the official bet. I think this is a fixture where the head-to-head swings very well into towards your selection. We had this last weekend with Juventus, uh, who gave us a bit of a, a heart attack because they only scored in the 90th minute. I think they had two goals ruled out uh, when they had this great head-to-head record. Uh, but Valencia have won nine out of the last ten games against Granada at home. Um, so, yeah, let's just hope they can continue. Um, like you said, um, La Liga teams often make the home ground advantage more felt than uh, than teams in some of the other leagues. Um, let's hope Valencia can do it for us on Sunday. Two games left um, on the masterclass, powered by Betcosa. We going back to England for the second last game. Yes, so uh, we're going to to England. Um, a game that doesn't really need much uh, justification. We have Luton versus Liverpool, um, and a six thirty kickoff. Liverpool sitting uh, fourth, while Luton um sitting eighteenth. I think Luton is only better than Burnley and Sheffield. However, they also quite quite bad themselves, and I don't think. They will be able to to win against um against Liverpool. We've seen how Liverpool even 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 if they can concede three games first, they always um come up come up um on 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 top. So their latest games are your two ones, your three nils, your five ones, and then your two nils, and then that that, that was this. They had that surprising two two against um Brighton as 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 well, but um oh, sorry sorry um. But I'm still think they're. Conf- I'm quite confident with them being able to to win. Uh, let's look at um, Luton on the other side. Uh, out of the ten games they've played, they've only won two, and the rest they've lost, and then um, they've drawn two. And some of the teams um, they've 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 lost against. Uh, they did lose against Bentley, which is their rival. They did um, lose against Fulham as well. They lost against West Ham as well. They did lose against uh, Tottenham as well. So I think even when they are playing at home, um, they they do um, lose. So we have a 1-0, we have a 2-1, then that 1-1 against Wolves and then a 2-1 again. So yeah, not much to say on this game, to be honest. Uh, besides, yeah, Liverpool should should win it. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, Liverpool definitely favourites, um, especially also with their recent form. Uh, five wins in their last six, only that um, two all draw against Brighton, and actually the two one loss against Spurs, where they were, you know, it felt like a bit uh, they were cheated with two red cards, and the one goal not given before that. But seven wins in a row, so out of. Um, what is it? Their last thirteen games, they have won eleven. Um, and if they go into this game with the right attitude, they should definitely be too strong for Luton. Um, not much more needs to be said. You've given all the stats. Let's finish it off in in the Bundesliga. Yes, uh, let's finish it off in the Bundesliga, where we have Heidenheim versus um Stuttgart for an. 6.30 kickoff. Um, Hayden Hem are playing at home whilst that guy they are playing away. And the official bet here is an over 2.5 goals. Um, this is uh, mostly motivated by Stuttgart, to be honest. They have scored 27 um, goals out of the ninth, um, which it's the same amount of goals uh, compared to uh, your team, by Leverkusen. So you can see that... Um, the you you guys have set the the, the standard, and that's this is why I'm comparing comparing them to to your team, but um, <clears throat> they are sitting a uh, third, which is above Dortmund and above RP Leipzig. They mean business uh, this this season. They've 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 won seven games out of the nine, um, and then Heidenheim on the other side. They are sitting thirteenth. They're not really doing that bad for a team that just got um, promoted. So, based on this, they might they might stay up, but 
only time only time will tell. But um, <clears throat> looking at the the goal statistics, Stuttgart, like I say, they they quite good scorers. Um, eight out of the nine games they've played have been over two point five goals, um, while averaging four point two. And then Heidenheim on the other side, it's six out of the nine, and uh, while averaging uh, three point three point nine. Uh, however, when Heidenheim are playing at home, they average um, a higher amount of goals, which is 4.8. So I think, yeah, uh, I mean, this is, is Bundesliga at the end of the day. So I think it, it should come. It definitely should come home, especially, like you said, based on Stuttgart's form also head-to-head. Um, does look good. Seven out of nine head-to-head games had... Um, over 2.5 goals and um, six of those also had both teams to score. Um, Stuttgart are, however, um, without their main striker. You know, we've mentioned him, Sehu Gurassi, who scored 14 goals in his first eight uh, eight appearances. Uh, he has a hamstring in, uh, injury and they, we don't know when he will come back, but that didn't stop them uh, last week from having five goals in the game against Hoffenheim. So let's hope um, it will continue like this. Um, brings us to the end of this week's Masterclass. Um, 14 games overall, 65.3 odds. The code on Betcosa is CQQ3V. Uh, CQQ3V. Um, Masters. Any famous last words for this week? Um, this week, I think it's betting related. Uh, I'm gonna say what I said in the beginning of the of the um, uh, podcast. For me, I look at this having maybe three codes, which is one, it's the wishful one where we always play, which is a long one. And then the other two, it's the Saturday one. And then the other one, it's the Sunday one where I separate it. And uh, also I still try and spot some value if maybe there's um, a bet that I can take on, on, on its own. For example, the, the Sheffield versus Wolves game where Wolves are getting around about two odds and Sheffield, they've lost nine out of the 10 games. For me, I'm like, okay, they'll pros- possibly they'll lose another one. So let me just take Wolves as a, a normal um, straight win. So you just have to try and be smart about this thing. And this is why we provide, obviously, the, the explanation so that um, you can also question it on your own and say, you know what, I, I think these guys are talking nonsense. So let me remove that leg from from, from uh, my sleep. So, yeah, and uh, obviously all the best. Um, let's continue to bet responsibly. Yeah, no, I don't think we are we're talking nonsense. Um, especially those wise words, you know, in the end. Um I hope uh, you know, at least if at least one listener listens uh and, and makes some decent money and another, you know, doesn't lose a big chunk of money. I think we're already winning uh, masters even though um we can't win every week or all selections with the master class because this is betting after all, but um you know, when only two or one or two games are missing, it just shows that the research is there. Uh, I actually have also tried to learn from my own mistakes, and um, I, I've in the past few months, uh, you know, tried to go with lesser selections. I do have the long trains, and I hope that one of them will come through because obviously they can bring you really big money, but you keep your account alive by doing bets that have you know, lesser selections. You either look at uh, double up, like Masters is doing uh, very well, or you look at five odds, you know, pick four games uh, from this uh, podcast, uh, teams that you are really confident in, teams that sit at the top of the log, teams that are scoring goals. I promise you, you you will make some money, but obviously still bet responsible. And yeah, that's, that's where we keep it for... For this week's uh, masterclass, and good luck to everybody on the betting street. Good luck, everyone, and cheers. Bye bye.